This is 105.9 The Region, where parents talk and explore practical, proactive, and evidence-based solutions. This is Where Parents Talk with Leanne Castellino. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Where Parents Talk. My name is Leanne Castellino. On today's show, what evidence-based elements set the foundation for success within a family? That's the subject of a book by our guest today. She is a parenting journalist, a best-selling author, and resident parenting expert on Dr. Phil. Donna Tetro is also a former TV reporter, a former school teacher, and a mother of two teens. She's the author of The Castle Method. Donna joins us today from Los Angeles. Thank you for making the time. Thank you so much for having me, Leanne. Your book, The Castle Method, represents several years of you conducting research. What did that look like? Yeah, of course. I um, was a general assignment reporter for many years. And when I had my two sons, who are now 14 and 15 years old, I switched into this parenting niche at the time. It has grown and exploded since then. But I was very interested in learning how to be the best version of a parent that I could be, not the perfect parent. But so that really led me to take that reporter skill set and just start interviewing hundreds of experts in the field in psychology and education and research to come up with an idea, a foundation of how I could best parent my kids, knowing that every family is unique and different. Every parent is, every kid is, but it was fascinating to me. And I literally asked thousands of questions Um, and got all kinds of different answers and really learned a lot about this parenting field. So then what led you as you're on that journey to coming up with the theme of of the book, which is really about the foundational building blocks of a family? Yeah, great question. I, um, my background is as a teacher. And so when I was thinking about how to gather all this information together and make it concise and succinct succinct for people to really understand. I thought, you know, acronyms used as a metaphor could be a really good way to just build in these foundational building blocks. And from what I found, um, CASEL is an acronym used as a metaphor to build the castle or the family of your dreams, not the perfect family, but the best version of your unique family. And so these building blocks can be utilized in all families across the board. Even if, you know, you've got one family this way, you've got another family this way, we're all so different, but these are concepts that I learned from experts that you can build into the foundation of a family that can really help and benefit families, kids and parents. When you talk about taking years and doing all those hundreds of interviews, I'm curious as to what struck you most in what you heard through those interviews. You know, I think what was interesting to me is that um, I lost my mother very early on when I had kids. And parenting at that time, I know that my mom and dad did a great job and loved us unconditionally. And I felt that from them. Um, But parenting has evolved. And there is a lot of evidence out there now that can provide us um, opportunities to really work on ourselves as people as parents, um, and to provide um, best practices in the home based on this evidence. So I figured that looking at this research, asking all these experts what they have found um, is a good way to kind of encapsulate a way that we can parent with confidence. That was the other thing. Um, I'm an anxious mom. I'm an anxious person by nature. And I think that my goal was to ease my anxiety um, and to just know that I was doing the best that I could and then to disseminate that information to others if they wanted to accept it. Really interesting because where you landed was um, or is a symbol, which is CASEL, as you mentioned, an acronym and a metaphor. Can you take us through the seven evidence-based elements that comprise the CASEL method? Absolutely. So CASEL 
is an acronym and um, C is for compassion. A is for acceptance. S is for security. T, trust. L, love. And then I added two E's to the end of Castle, expectations and education. Um, and these are really all science-based. Um, so I just felt like if people could remember Castle and they could remember, oh, maybe I should start with compassion in this scenario, um, that it, it is easier for parents. I've read a lot of parenting books. Many are very good. But I also really wanted to just give this like solution where I can change my mindset and think with these foundational pieces um, and parent my way through that. Now, starting with compassion, why is compassion such a foundational block of the foundational blocks for a family in your view? Absolutely. So compassion really is the foundation and everything behind it, acceptance, security, et cetera, uh, is built upon compassion. And so what we want to think about when we're thinking about compassion is it takes empathy one step further. So when you look at empathy, you are putting yourself in another's shoes. So you are putting yourself in your child's shoes. Compassion, though, takes that to the next step where you are empathetic, but then with compassion, you are trying to alleviate the suffering another via solutions. So we're trying to empower um, ourselves, our child, our teen to come up with their own solutions, but taking that empathy to another level. And so not only giving compassion, but then also practicing and teaching self-compassion. It's really a big part of the book where I want parents to feel that self-compassion and to model it and then teach their children how to be self-compassionate. You are listening to Where Parents Talk on 105.9 The Region. I'm Leanne Castellino in conversation with Donna Tetro. We are discussing evidence-based concepts that are foundational to a family. The book, The Castle Method, is positioned, Donna, as a book for the entire family. Why is that? Oh, uh, it's, it's so important to me because when I look at parenting and through that lens of the books that we're seeing out there, um, it's, it's really highlighting what parents need to do. And what I wanted to focus on is that we're all growing and evolving within the family. I'm growing and becoming a new mother to teenagers. I was a mom to toddlers and you know elementary school kids. So we're all evolving. And so as our kids are evolving, so are we as parents and so is our family. And so to kind of take that pressure off that we have to be these perfect parents and to look at it as we're in this family together. We are this unique family and we're going to grow and evolve together and learn together to be the best versions of ourself and the best version of our family. And that's what I think drove me when I was trying to figure out, you know, how to parent my two boys who are very different people, right? All of our kids are very, it's just not just one approach. So I think these fundamental um, foundational tools, you can look at them and then put them into any approach that you're dealing with any scenario. And so it's just a way to kind of take the pressure off of parents and to, to really say we are evolving too. Um, so it was something that I, you know, one of my earliest blog, um, I was doing blogging when I started and, and, and the blog was called super mommy, not because there's this, there's just this pressure um, that I think a lot of us feel and we kind of got to release it and just give up and, and know that um, we've got to kind of trust the process just as we tell our kids to trust their process, whether it's in education or athletics or the arts. So kind of just trust that process that um, we're doing the best that we can. The letter A represents acceptance in your book. Why is that a foundational building block? Yeah, acceptance was really interesting to me because I interviewed a doctor out of the University of Connecticut, Dr. Ronald Rohner, and he has been doing decades of research on 
acceptance and the brain. And even perceived rejection changes the brain. So rejection, he has found, changes how our kids learn, love, and grow in life. And so I think that um, in this generation of parenting and of that helicoptering still continuing, um, acceptance is not true to our kids. So it's not what we want for them. It's what they want for themselves. And that is a part of that acceptance. And so I think having that knowledge, just that evidence, that research that says rejection changes the brain. And what he was trying to explain, this doctor, was that um, when, when, when parents become aware of this, they're better able to change the direction of the way they parent. And it's not always going to be perfect. You know, th that rejection seeps in. But to have that awareness is really, really key. Security is the next element. What's the significance of security in a family as a foundational element? So when I talk about security, it's not really about the phys physical security. I'm talking about the emotional security. And in, in, in the families that most of us parents who are parenting now did not, we were not provided necessarily um, knowingly um, emotional security. And so what that looks like, what I try to talk about in the chapter is how to really allow for all emotions, really trying we, since the pandemic, you know, I think it, it, it was highlighted that mental health, even though that that was rising, the, the trajectory of what was going on with our youth was rising before the pandemic, the issues um, with bullying, et cetera. Um, the emotions are something within the family system that we have to help not only regulate ourselves and manage and model, but to teach that skill set. And so this is kind of, you know, as former educators, this um, has, has been kind of built into some of our school systems, but really not at the level we need. And so what I'm saying is that we really need to build it into our family systems so that parents understand how to help kids regulate and manage their emotions. Our conversation with Donna Tetro, parenting journalist and author of The Castle Method, continues. Stay with us. Want to learn more about the show? Email info at whereparentstalk.com. Stick around. Leanne Castellino and Where Parents Talk will be right back on 1059 The Region. Welcome back to Where Parents Talk. Listen live at 1059theregion.com. Here's Leanne Castellino. Welcome back. We are talking about the evidence-based building blocks that are foundational to a family. Our guest is Donna Tetro, parenting contributor on Dr. Phil and best-selling author. Now, Donna, you alluded earlier to emotions. There will be many parents watching or listening to this interview who may not have grown up talking about or being aware of their emotions. And now they're being asked to talk about these elements with their children. What would be your advice to that parent to help them rewrite that script for their own kids? Love this question. Look, it's it's it takes time and practice. Uh, this is a working um, we're working in progress and we're trying to figure out what to do. But one way that you can build this skill set in is to understand how to recognize and manage emotions. And so here's an example. Kid comes home from school. They're really upset. You don't know why. You can ask what's going on. Most parents would ask that. Kid might say, I don't want to talk about it. Maybe giving kids space. Okay, I'm open for when you want to talk about it, come to me. Then child comes to parent and says, you know, I'm feeling really upset about this situation that happened at school. So parent can then say, so how do you feel? What is that emotion? Identify that emotion. So maybe child might say angry, frustrated, sad. Okay, that's a fair emotion to have. 
allowing then the next step is allowing that uncomfortable emotion, not trying to squash it, not trying to fix it, but allowing for that emotion, then moving on to how do you think that you can move on to feeling better? What might work for you? So we're identifying the emotion, then we're feeling the emotion, allow parent allowing for that uncomfortable emotion, not trying to fix it, and then asking child, how do you think, you know, what can you do to better um, feel better? And, and what might that look like? Child's not gonna go from angry to happy all of a sudden, knowing that emotional scale, they'll move up. but just that practice in in daily life and then parents modeling when they're upset so i get home from work i'm upset i can articulate you know what i need a couple minutes i had a really rough day at 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 work that then allows our child to have compassion for us so we're building in all of these skills and they can be simple skills but it's just working and working and practicing and practicing the other element that comes to mind when we talk about emotions is certainly the difference between boys and girls so what can you offer in terms of tangible tips and strategies for parents on that element so i wrote a book called Dear Me, Letters to Myself for All of My Emotions. And it is evidence-based and it is a strategy. And this, the main character is a boy because what I wanted um, parents, kids to know that even though we have this kind of toxic masculinity inside of our society, we do have to reverse it. We have to allow our boys to feel the emotions um, that we allow our girls to feel. Um, right now, boys are really only able to express the anger or frustration. We want to allow all emotions for our boys. And so one way to do that is to write about our feelings. And this is something that um, young kids can do, even if they're not writing yet, they can draw about their emotions. And this is evidence-based. We want them to find ways to express their emotions. So say um, a young kid comes home very upset um, from school, ask them to draw about how they feel. We want to ask our kids, how do you feel um, in scenarios where things are going on instead of how can I fix it? How do you feel? We really want to embed in the family system that all feelings are okay. Um, and then when we have positive emotions, it's really important to recognize those positive emotions. So when a child is happy and joyful, parent just saying, wow, that really makes you happy, doesn't it? And we know from positive psychology that that builds the momentum for kids to identify more and more positive emotions. So they kind of have that in the background to know when I have negative emotions or really uncomfortable emotions that I can go to those positive emotions. Continuing on with the CASTLE method, T stands for trust, certainly foundational to the success of any relationship. What does that look like in a family foundation? Trust is really important in that we have to learn to trust our child's path, our child's journey, our, our teen's path. And so that looks like allowing them to make the decisions that they can in the particular uh, scenario that they're in. Of course, parents have to step in and guide and support. But when you know that a child can make a decision on their own, trusting it, allowing it, and even knowing that if there's going to be a fail in it, that that's okay. So trust is really imperative in that we are telling our kid when we trust them, I trust you. And guess what? That means that you can trust you because the goal is to get them into adulthood, to be able to trust themselves and to not wonder um, what does mom think? What does dad think? What does employer think? I trust my decision. I trust my inner um, person. And so that's that trust factor that I really like to talk about. The concept of trust for a helicopter parent, for example, could well be a huge leap. 
What can you suggest in terms of tangible steps they can take to get to a place where they can trust their child to make their own decisions? Well, I think it's really important for parents to kind of think about what the end goal is. And the end goal is to bring in um, healthy, competent, um, courageous adults into the world. And it's a matter of practicing as a child, as an elementary school person, as a teen, to get into adulthood. And so if you look at it that I'm just practicing how to be a human. I'm practicing how to get to the next level in my life. So it might look like for a teenager, you know, parents are really concerned about college and where kids are going to go to college. Allowing the teen the path to decide what classes they should take that are intrinsic to how they want to learn instead of Well, I think I know better. I think that you should do X, Y, and Z to check these boxes because it's going to help you get into maybe this college, who knows, but allowing them, you know, to pick their own classes and to have a voice in their world and their life. And so it, it can look a lot of different ways, but I think that when parents understand the end goal that all of this is just practice. This trust is practice to get our kids to where they need to be. The multi-layered lens that you bring to these parenting questions is quite unique as a former TV reporter, a former teacher, and now a parenting journalist. In what ways did your different lived experiences help you shape this book? I think the teacher part of me is stronger than the journalist part in me. Um, I really enjoy being a journalist, but the teaching aspect is really interesting to me because you can really look through this different lens. And I think that when I was a teacher and in particular at parent teacher conferences, um, you know, parents kind of just wanted to know the information from me, you know, what, what, what are you doing? What can you do? And I think that it's really important for parents to know that, being a part of your child's education all the way through is really, really important. And even in those teen years, when you think you can pull back, yes, you're going to allow for that interdependence. But what I found was I wanted to know more about the kids minus the academics. What's missing in education right now is this connection between teachers and their students. And it's be, there's an array of, of reasons. They're trying to catch up. Teachers are trying to catch up. Kids are trying to catch up. And I think that when parents can help with that connection um, by telling teachers who your kid is, you know, this is what my kid enjoys. This is how I see my kid learning. This is, um, you know, who they show themselves to be at home. How are they at school? So it's it's building connections that I think are really important in the educational process that I think a lot of parents feel like, well, I'm just gonna let my kids go to school and the teachers are gonna handle it. But what I like to say is that it's parent, teacher, student. You're a team, you're working together and um, that's how you're gonna get best results. Now, the L in the CASEL method stands for love. What would you like to say in terms of how love serves a family foundation? I really talk about love and unconditional love, but I think for these purposes, it's really about self-love. We have a lot of adults walking around who did not have good self-esteem and are practicing that inside of their homes and don't show themselves love. And so I think um, teaching self-love is a way to level up on self-esteem. So self-esteem comes from outside sources, from uh, the environment and other people, but self-love comes from our inner being. And so it's really trying to focus on, um, there was one study that was done where Um, a doctor was looking at, you know, how do you promote this self-love? And it's basically like showing a kid, you know, you may not like something about your physical self, but knowing what that is and just accepting it for what it is can provide self-love. 
but we're building in this this idea that mom and dad have to show themselves self love um and modeling again that for our kids and and really trying to get our kids to understand that their inner world is their guiding world not the outside world and that's you know we've got social media that's coming into play we have all these different things so it's really self-love um just leveling up on self-esteem the final part of the castle method involves expectations and education what would you like to say about that yeah, expectations are really important. And we know this from science that um, in particular, you know, when it comes to um, underage drinking, we know that if you set expectations for your kids that you hope that they will not be drinking. But again, if they do, you know, you're their safe zone. But the expectation is, is that you don't, that kids will rise to those expectations, not to say that they're not going to make mistakes and have uh, bumpy roads here and there, but expectations are important. Um, chores, those expectations are saying to our family system that you are a participant in this family. I'm not going to necessarily pay you for your chores, but being a part of this family, that is an expectation. So, and you build in expectations for your particular uh, family that, and your value system. And then education, I kind of did touch on it, but I think that the education part that I didn't was just educating ourselves as parents as we go along. There is so much evidence out there. There is so much research that we can pull from that we weren't, our parents' generation wasn't really able to. So I think just being open to it, not having to study it like a parenting journalist or a researcher or um, a psychologist, but being aware of, um, you know, there are different ways to approach things in your family, it's going to work for one family this way, it's not going to work for one family. So just being open to all these different possibilities and, and what works for your unique family. Certainly one of the unique challenges of parenting today is the amount of trauma that both parents and children are exposed to in the world. In what ways does the Castle Method address and actively address mental health? Such a good question. Yeah, I, I did mention that I'm a bit of an anxious parent and I can be, but that emotions, that that emotional security, really working on ourselves as parents to understand why we're feeling a certain way, um, what emotions those bring out. And then, and asking ourselves, getting really curious, am I parenting through that fear, that anxiety, or is this just an emotion that of course is impermanent and will fade? And can I check myself on that? And so um, we, we wanna be able to really practice managing those emotions and being really aware. And then that allows for better mental health and well-being. We know that emotional regulation allows for better mental um, health as well as resilience. So we want to build that resilience in with that emotional security. Donna Tetro, author of The Castle Method, really appreciate your time and your insight today. Thank you so much for having me. The full video interview with Donna can be found on our website, whereparentstalk.com. I'm Leanne Castellino. Thanks for listening. Hope you'll join us next time. Sign up for Leanne's parenting newsletter and so much more at whereparentstalk.com. This is Where Parents Talk on 105.9 The Region.